Welcome to The Faith Alive, a series from the Diocese of Harrisburg that explores and explains the teachings of the Catholic faith. As we continue our discussion on Catholic social teaching today, we're specifically looking at the rights of people and the poor. I encourage you to prayerfully consider the areas of your life that may need some adjustments to more closely follow these social teachings of our church. So the third social teacher principle of our church's social teaching are the rights and responsibilities of the person. Human dignity is to be protected and healthy communities can only be achieved if human rights are recognized and honored and responsibilities are met by the members of society. Every person has a fundamental right to life and a right to those things required for human decency. We often hear the phrase, the common good. The people, especially those uh, who are our legislators and in government, need to work for the common good, to put aside partisan issues and to do what is just and right for all of the members of the society. The common good calls for social peace, the stability and security provided by a certain order which cannot be achieved without particular concern for what's called distributive justice. Whenever this is violated, violence always ensues. Society as a whole and the state in particular are obliged to defend and promote the common good. The inviolability of the human person, which is a reflection of the absolute inviolability of God in whose image and likeness we've been made, finds its primary and its fundamental expression in the inviolability of human life. God is the author of life and he alone breathes life into us he alone determines when our life on this earth should end. Man has the right to live, and he has the right to bodily integrity, to the means necessary for the proper development of life, particularly those things so essential to a dignified life, food, clothing, shelter, proper medical care, rest, and finally, the necessary social services to take care of our lives. In a consequence, he has the right to be looked after in the event of poor health or declining health, disability stemming perhaps from work, uh, widowhood, the infirmity of old age, enforced unemployment, or whenever, through no fault of his own, he's deprived of the means of livelihood. We require a social network, something to assist us when we fall into those difficult, challenging situations. In human society, one man's natural right gives rise to a corresponding duty in other people, the duty of recognizing and respecting my rights. I respect the rights that you have, you respect my rights, that corresponding rights and responsibility to recognize rights are part and parcel of a harmonious society. As for the state, it also has the duty to protect the rights of all of its people, and particularly of its most vulnerable, its weaker members, workers, women, children, the state has the obligation to take care of those people and their rights. The fourth principle of Catholic social teaching regards the poor and the vulnerable. It's often phrased as a preferential treatment for the poor. The basic moral test is how these most vulnerable people are faring in a society. Jesus said, as you do to the least of these, my brethren, you do it to me, 
in the 25th chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, the beautiful passage about the final judgment. So in the end, we will be judged on love, our love for others, especially those who are the most vulnerable. This corresponds to the way we treat others. Our Lord said, be merciful as your heavenly Father is merciful. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven and it will be given to you. For the measure that you give will be the measure that you get back. That proportionality in the way we live and treat others, and that's what the Lord will, the way in which the Lord will treat us, is very clear in the teachings of our Lord in the Gospels. The church's love for the poor is part of the tradition and inspired by the Beatitudes. Our Lord's own poverty and his concern for the poor is so clear in the Gospels. A preferential love for the poor and for all others is made concrete in the promotion of justice. The primary purpose of this special commitment to the poor is to enable them to become active participants in the total life of society. It's to enable all persons to share in and make their own personal contribution to the common good. This option of the poor is not to pit one group or class against another. The deprivation of the poor wounds the whole community. The extent of their suffering is a measure of how far we are from being a true community of caring persons. Everyone knows that the fathers of the church had laid down the duty of the rich toward the poor in no uncertain terms. As St. Ambrose put it, you are not making a gift of what is yours to the poor man, but you are giving back what is his. You have been appropriating things that are meant to be for the common use of everyone. The earth belongs to everyone, not to the rich. So said the great father of the church, St. Ambrose. Thank you for joining me. And until next time, may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen.